Well, welcome back. This is Tommy with the Care Team, and this is the Care Team Podcast, Episode Five Zero. So we're coming up on one year here in a couple of weeks. So we're really excited about that. Yeah. Um, but this this episode is airing on August twenty sixth, and uh, we're so glad you guys can join us. And so today we're going to talk about loneliness, uh, which is an extremely critical issue, uh, especially before uh, even before COVID. But now with COVID and mm-hmm. isolation, has become Absolutely. much more of a uh, Kind of a common uh, occurrence. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, before we dive in, though, we just kind of wanted to talk. Uh, normally, we have a soft start, but uh, but in this case, we're going to talk about Monday night. We're going to talk about uh, this season of Care Night. We just kicked it off. Uh, it's still not too late to join in. It's still not too late to register for a class. We would love to have you uh, every Monday night, six thirty p.m. Uh, just here at Northside on campus. So, and uh, but last night was awesome. It was. Mm-hmm. It was a good night. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Correction. Monday night was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome, and it, and uh, and maybe surprisingly so, just because uh, with everything that's gone on with the Delta variant, we didn't know what attendance would be like, and attendance was fantastic. Tommy talked specifically about uh, the new group reboot. Yeah, uh, what a blessing! Talk about your attendance, man. That was awesome. Like it, it the the response we've received from reboot. Uh, people reaching out wanting to join the class. People reaching out they want to lead the class. Uh, it's been amazing. I mean, and just uh, the the support we've received from the reboot team organization has been just just wonderful. Yeah, Callie, you were running around uh, doing a little bit of everything, yeah. so you had kind of eyes on the evening. Talk a little bit about some of the high points and just what you saw. Yeah, I think it was cool because a lot more people walked in needing to register, so you could tell that it was maybe not as like thought out, honestly. Just people wanting to come just to see what it was about, mm-hmm. and then just being able to connect them like as soon as they walked in. Um, also, just seeing a lot more new faces than I normally have. So, and I just want to shout out to Diane Roan for helping us with volunteers. Diane, Diane. She's so Ooh, great, yes. um, connecting us with new people. Um, just people wanting to serve. So thank you so much, Diane. I love yeah. Diane and Brian. They're, they're just a wonderful yeah. couple. So. And and to that point, all of our wonderful volunteers oh, and yeah. leaders that yeah. really um, make what we do possible. Mm-hmm. Um, it's exciting to see people growing in, in those positions, uh, moving up in leadership positions. Uh, one of the exciting things for me last night was uh, a few new things we're doing. In fact, mm-hmm. you mentioned Brian. Um, one of the things we're doing is we have a room where we're, we're literally just having scripture read over the evening to cover cover our church Mm -hmm. our community and god's word we have a prayer room that's new as well where you can go to get prayer give prayer uh sit and pray and and again we're just asking people pray and cover the cover care night cover our church cover our community um Mm -hmm. so just exciting to see all the new things that are happening yeah and yeah just just this season it just can't be uh uh it, it, it couldn't have gotten here soon enough i mean we just we were seeing a lot of folks you know just uh, you know, navigating through challenges of life, things that, um, things that, you know, maybe some people think it's routine, uh, but to most of it's not routine. So we're just, we're just glad to be here and offer yeah. uh, support and services. Before we move on to our, our main topic today, could you talk, Callie, about how, if you want to still register, you want to get involved, yeah. just kind of options and ways to do that? Yeah. So the best way is probably going to be to go to mynorthside.com slash care. It's going to show all of our support groups and you can push join this group or join a support group right under each section. So that's all listed on our main. If, if you don't have a computer, if that's cumbersome for you, uh, we do have ways to register here um, on campus as well. Yep. Um, and pretty soon be looking for more online content yes. as well. We do post all of our teachings from Celebrate Recovery. Um, and we do have some links of uh, things like grief share and divorce care that have online content, but we'll also be doing more local local content that'll be online. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yeah, I had somebody reaching out today saying, "Hey, how can I catch up?" You know, because they couldn't make it the first week. So. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing too is with that is so most of our classes have costs associated with it, but if that's a barrier, we want to have that conversation and we yeah. want to see how we can help. So. But as we dive in today, um, we know that. Um, loneliness is real and uh and we're going to kind of unpack like what that means and and uh, we're going to we're going to give some some uh some counseling examples uh some situations where uh we've seen about in the past where, where people just feel like they're not connected uh for one reason or another and uh we we want to we want to acknowledge that and we want to talk about some ways that they can um uh tackle loneliness so yeah yeah we were, i think we mentioned it in the opening there that it's becoming such um, 
it's becoming more common. And I, I think you said, Tommy, even prior to COVID and what uh, a lot of psychologists and psychiatrists and even studies have indicated is that we're in a, we're in a day and time when we're really, truly more connected than ever, whether that's yep. through email or social media or text messaging. We have our cell phones that are with us usually all the time, maybe even <laughs> beside our bed, which not a good idea, but anyway, it's another topic. Um, and yet we feel isolated. We feel alone. We feel separated. Um, and, and it really, I, I think in many ways leads to not only spiritual and mental, but even physical sickness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and you know, just to, to, to kind of set up to, to kind of tee up the topic. So, uh, you know, we were talking as a team beforehand, just some examples of, uh, just to kind of get us, uh, uh in, in the, in the mindset of, of, if, you know, when someone comes in, they want to or if they call us, oftentimes it's they're calling us, you know, over the phone and saying, "Hey, I'm, I don't I don't see anybody. I'm I'm not around anybody." But uh, I, I remember one one situation. It was uh, 2018, I want to say. Uh, so this is before COVID, and uh, I was it was a POC, it was a, a, a pastor on call moment, and uh, I was talking to the guy, and he's like, "Nobody comes to visit me. I don't have family." Uh, I I think he was wheelchair bound, mm. and uh, he had services. So, I mean, he was you know taken care of medically but as far as like uh community and uh you know connecting with other people he was just completely disconnected yeah and it, it was hard because he was like can anybody just come visit me you know i, I just don't see people yeah I, and i think we were also discussing that there's loneliness is a feeling and loneliness is not dependent upon um whether you're with a group or not with a group. One of the things yep. we were talking about is addiction. Often there's a lot of loneliness and isolation and addiction. And one of the things we're, we're trying to do with this podcast uh, changes a little bit or is focus. How would we talk to somebody if they came in? And so I think of, you know, if, an, if someone who's either, either in the midst of their addiction or even if they're newly in recovery, they came in and they started talking about loneliness, I would, I would start addressing, you know, with whom are you getting real? You know, with yep. whom, whom can you really bear your soul, uh, talk about the things that you're really struggling with, who, who's safe to talk about the things you think about. You know, um, a lot of loneliness is based on interior isolation, not necessarily mm -hmm. physical. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I love the what you shared about that gentleman because he had literal isolation in a lot of ways. Yep. But you could have somebody go into a party every night and feel completely alone because maybe if – Maybe they think if someone knew what they were thinking or feeling, they wouldn't want to be with them or they wouldn't want to be their friend. So mm -hmm. they just come and put on a smile yep. and, and party and leave and never really connect with anybody. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and, and, and too, with that, uh, actually at our, our, our group last night, we were talking about um, opening up to people and, 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 and sharing what's on our heart and explaining to them as clearly and and uh, and seeking out grace and, and building relationships and, and the importance of sharing. You know, I, I remember telling our group last night, I said, until you open up to people, you're not going to get, they're, they're not going to get to know you. They may know of you and, and they may see your life on social media or they may see your life here or there, but they're not going to know you until you start opening up. And, and, and that can be hard, you know, depending on uh, your background, uh, you know, Generally, that that's uh, traditionally very hard for men, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's so important to open up and to share, just like you said, be real with people. And uh, but before you do that, though, uh, you know, I, I want to talk about the importance of also, uh, just as we were talking about before, the importance of connecting with Christ. Yeah, and I, you know, I've heard a lot of good sermons um, here and in various other places about. You know, we worship a God that is three and yep. three and one. Mm -hmm. And and that God is based on, is formed in community. Amen. And and so when we connect with Christ, we are already connecting in community. Yep. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They're in community. Now we're in community with them. And and um if if my worth, if my self identity isn't grounded someplace that has eternal value then I'm always going to be kind of like uh, that sagebrush blowing across the, you know, I'm not, I'm not grounded. I'm not yeah. anchored. I'm not connected to anything. Yep. And then 
all of my connections, even with human beings, are going to be more hollow. Mm-hmm. And so I think our primary focus um, today, maybe in, in this podcast, is if, if you're lonely, we want, we want to start first with where is your relationship with Christ? Yep. Well, and, and you brought up a good point before we got started, too. You know, uh, uh, love God, uh, all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And it's like, like wow, it's almost like Jesus kind of <laughs> quickly addressed what we're talking about. You and know? I've heard something before that's like, and to love your neighbor as yourself, it might have even been here. It's like you have to love yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's like you have to start with that foundational relationship between you and Christ before you can truly love others the way that we need to. Well, yeah. and that's it, right? We we have to accept God's love and understand God's love for us, which enables us to love ourselves, which enables mm-hmm. us to love our neighbor. Yeah. And one thing, too, talking about foundation, and, and I know. The, the thing that we can see on the outside is the loneliness or the isolation, but there's also the things that are not visibly seen. And can, maybe it's a, a situation where there's pride, you know, that, that is, is, has put someone there. Or maybe it's, uh, maybe there's a lie written on their heart that they're not good enough mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. they don't feel like they're, uh, a, you know, that, that they're on the same level as other people because of whatever reason. Well, and, and let's not ignore unconfessed sin. Yep. You know, um, I think it's really important that I think there are a lot of people that have low self-esteem, low self-worth, low self-value based on lies. Yep. But there are also folks that may or may not know that they're living in sin or unconfessed mm-hmm. sin. And just think about what we were just talking about. If if Christ is where we start and sin separates us and isolates us from Christ, then yep. you can see how that loneliness and that isolation will begin to creep in. I remember, uh, I think it was Nate a couple of weeks ago talking about that. Like, you know, when we're not around other people, or we're not in community. Like it, like that's the devil's playground. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. just being around, you know, uh, not, not being around other people and, and being like, Hey, nobody's going to find out about this. And it's, and, and that can just eat you alive. And, yeah. and, and just like you said, just, yeah disconnect you from other people we were talking ahead of time about scriptures and and i'll kind of talk about two aspects of that um i i just did a a google search just to be transparent i I didn't pull my bible out i just did a google search on scriptures related to to loneliness and not a lot came up which was really interesting but what did come up are solutions to loneliness about being in community about joining with christ about um, resting in the lord um but I do think if you read the Psalms, I think mm-hmm. Psalms are a gr- great place to go if you feel like you're feeling lonely and that makes you somehow different. These are people that God used and that had a relationship with the Lord, yeah. that knew the Lord uh, better than me in many ways, and yet they still face times of feeling separated, feeling mm-hmm. lonely, mm-hmm. feeling isolated. So um, the scripture is fantastic. You can't go wrong getting into God's yep. word, but if just a specific area, if you want to read, I think the Psalms are a good place to start. Well, and, and you know that I, I love that you brought up Psalms cause I, amen. If you're not, if, if you, if you didn't catch that dive into Psalms, like <laughs> I, I love that. Um, you know, another, another, uh, uh, very short book I think about is Jonah, mm. you know, and this guy, uh, you know, he, uh, he gets prompted by God to go and to to, uh, to give a message, and he, he does everything except for what God tells him to do. And so God, you know, uh, uh, he gets thrown into the ocean. God uh, rescues him, swallows him up with a fish, and he's there for three days. And, and Jonah's like, you almost kind of get the idea, okay, maybe he's learned his lesson. Maybe he's getting the point. And then he goes there, and he, he I, I want to say it's either four or five words, actually, in the Hebrew. He didn't even give a full message. It's just a few words and in, in how God worked in and through him. And, and you know, so, like, even in those moments where we think that, like, what can God, what can God do with me? It's like God can do some pretty miraculous things. I mean, He's the, uh, you know, He's the God of miracles, and so like, yes, even in the the minor things, uh, God can work in and through you. And so, and so, having that, uh, I would hope uh, would give you some confidence. Yeah, I, I'm sitting here thinking that because you know, well, go ahead, one thing yeah, I go say, ahead. When I see people like Jonah, I'm like, it it, it gives me. It, it gives me hope because I, I I know my sin, I know my shortcomings, I know my doubt, I know my fear, and if you know we see that that this is a historical account of how God has worked in and through somebody who who clearly we're, we're see there you know very short in just a couple books or excuse me just a couple chapters where he doesn't have it all together, but God still worked in and through him, so that should give us 
confidence. And I'm really happy that I haven't had to be in the belly of a fish. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Although there was that one guy who was yeah, who was swallowed recently. Up, yeah. yeah, for like a minute. And yeah. I'm like, that had to be a long I mean I mean a long minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it is possible. <laughs> I think it's hard to avoid the topic of depression when talking yeah. about loneliness, yep. mm -hmm. and that's really going to be another topic for another podcast, so I don't want to dive too deep in that. But I want to say that if if you've tried things, if you've tried joining with other people, maybe you've even gone to counseling, you know, you're, you're doing work to feel connected because you know that you're feeling lonely and separated and you can't get past it. Uh, it might be time to look at maybe there's something clinical going yep. on, a deeper depression, um, so I don't want anybody listening today to feel like you need to take all the blame. Um, I do think it's good to be um, uh, motivated and, and, you know, seek out solution. But again, if you've been seeking out solution, if you know something's not right and you're trying and you're trying and you're trying and you're not making any progress, mm -hmm. you might look at something like depression. And yeah. again, we'll, we'll hit that much deeper on another podcast, but just felt like I need to bring that up. Yeah, and so, uh, so we talked uh, a lot about connecting with God and the importance of that, uh, which which is our, our first step. Like we we have to make that the priority, the foundation. But then the other step too is, you know, I I know a lot of people in the church are they're fasting from from social media, uh, you know, and yeah, I think that's very healthy for many reasons. Uh, uh, but um, on the topic of let, let's pick on social media for a moment, like some people have millions of followers if not more. And um, it, you can easily feel like you are connected to the world when you have even just a few thousand followers. And, or if you're, if you're connected to hundreds of people, you know, on social media or uh, Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Uh, but that doesn't mean you're actually in community like that. That I, I think one thing with social media that I don't like is it gives us a false sense of community Mm -hmm. Good friend of mine, Rod, who was who was not uh, a psychologist, but was very wise and was a mentor of mine for a long time, used to say that the problem with human beings is that we don't communicate with one another. Our puppets communicate with one another. Yep. And I think social media is a place where this is so true that I can literally manipulate what others see about my life. And that's why everybody on social media seems to have a perfect life because mm. you're only seeing the good photos, not the five that didn't turn out. <laughs> you're only hearing about the fun vacation, not the one that went terribly wrong. Mm -hmm. Or even if you do, it's all in jokes and this sort of thing. And mm -hmm. that's not real. That's yeah. not reality. Um, I Some people use social media and use it well, so I don't want to say it's all bad. God can use anything for good. Mm -hmm. But it's a caution just in general to be careful that it's not our puppets talking to each other. It's not a facade. It's not what we want people to see about us, but what's really going on. Because if we want to feel connected, if we want to have real community, we have to be just that. We have to be real. Yep. Yeah. Take out all the filters. Take out all the the, the PR department. <laughs> you know, yeah. your, your puppets, and and let, let's get real. And and so we, we just kind of want to throw a few options out there. I know we've talked uh, a few weeks ago about groups, and, and so, like, this is a great opportunity to, to just kind of talk about how that's a solution for this problem. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not trying to make, we're not trying to make this a groups um, uh, episode, but we want to talk about how groups can be part of the solution. Sure. So uh, there are many ways to get connected with people in person. And, and here's the thing too, I want to make sure I throw out is that if, if you are um, uh, uh, having a medical challenge or you're immune compromised or, or some, something else that, that doesn't allow you to be in person, uh, I, I'm not suggesting you need to stop and, go to person. Mm -hmm. right, I, I'm right. not suggesting that, but, it, but there are ways to get connected even, um, even in the midst of all those challenges. If you have medical you know, challenges, ways we have, we have virtual groups who actually get to physically see people and talk to people and you, you get to know them, but there's, there's many groups we have in person. We have life groups, we have women's groups, men's groups. Uh, this is the care department. This is our care team podcast. We have care groups and, and mm -hmm. you, this is a safe place this is a place where you can be seen, heard, loved, uh, acknowledged. You, you can be, uh, you know, we want to journey with you. We want to help. Uh, if, if Monday night's a good spot for you, we would love to invite you to Monday night. If that doesn't work out, that's okay. We would love to help you get connected here at Northside or, or somewhere else. But uh, if you're listening in a different country or a different part of uh, the United States, and maybe Northside's not able to be your home, we would love to help you get connected to a local church home. That's right. I, 
I think, you know, looking at um, groups over the years at churches, you know, for a long time they were Bible study groups, Sunday school, then we had sort of small groups, that kind of thing. And now most churches, many have landed on the term life group. Yep. And I think that's really important. Um, churches have seen over the years, especially churches our size and bigger, that if you really want to feel connected and a part of, it's almost essential that you're in a, in a, in a smaller yep. community, a, a life group, and literally doing life together. And you can't do life together if you're not connecting, if you're not being open, if you're not being honest uh, and being real, because I tell people this all the time that come in for counseling. If you have a runny nose, a cough, achy joints and a headache, and you only tell the doctor about your cough and your headache, that's all they can treat. Yep. If I'm not getting real, if I'm not talking about all that's going on with me, I can't get better. Yep. And I and I I'm gonna I'm gonna walk away and I'm gonna scratch my head and I'm gonna go, gosh, why do I still feel so isolated and lonely? Well, because you're not being real. And I know sometimes that's really, really hard. It feels vulnerability often feels like weakness. It feels like um, I'm I'm sort of exposing myself and I recognize that, but that's why we circle back to what we said about being grounded in Christ. Yep. Because he won't let you down. He's going to protect you when you're vulnerable. Um, he's with you no matter what you go through. And I want to say, if you're at, at home, you're listening, or you're in your car or wherever, and you're thinking, okay, but I... I don't know how to connect with Christ or I don't I want some I want some concrete things I can do. Well, one of the first things I would encourage is prayer. We say all the time in care ministry that prayer is primary. Yep. And that's in regards to every aspect of our lives. I, I I would be willing to bet that anybody that walked in for a counseling session here at Northside and said they were lonely if I asked them about their prayer life, it would not be a vigorous prayer life. Yep. It's almost impossible to talk to God on a daily basis and invite him into your life and feel lonely. Yeah. So the the very place to start is with your prayer life. And if you're listening to this and you don't know how to get started in your prayer life, we would love to help you. Amen. And and to Tommy's point about support groups and and what we do on Care Night, um, we actually say this in, in our uh, Discover North side, which is coming up soon, that if you're struggling with sin or an addiction or um, we like to say hurt habit or hang up, that might be the place to start, um, and we would love to see life groups come out of our support groups. Yep. Amen. People mm -hmm. that know they've already connected, they've already been real and vulnerable with each other, they already feel like there's something binding them, and to go out and to do life together from support groups. But that might be the place for you to start. And again, as Tommy said, we would help you figure out which one would be best and where you fit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, and and well and, and I, I love that because you know we don't want to be a cul-de-sac we want to be an on-ramp, yeah for sure. But as we get to wrap up, you know we're we're, we're just uh, uh, we're so grateful you could tune in. Uh, this is such an important topic, and I know that things like COVID isolation has just not uh, has is is only made this uh, more challenging. And so uh, you know if 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 you have any questions, we would love to connect with you. But as we get to wrap up, uh, I'm, I'm gonna. Put Callie on the spot and see if she'd be willing to yeah. pray for us because, uh, as we like saying in the care ministry, prayer is primary and uh, it's easy to connect with God, just like what Tom was saying. Um, you know, think about Ecclesiastes 5 2, let your words be few. You don't have to have an elaborate prayer. That's right. Um, mm. So, yeah. Um, dear God, just thank you so much um, for today. Thank you for the people that are listening to this podcast. Um, just thank you for um, just the opportunity to just be alive. Thank you for the opportunity to just connect with you every day, Lord, in every moment. Um, whether it's just because we want to seek you, Lord, or just because we need you and we feel desperate for that presence and we feel desperate for that connection with you, Lord. Um, just thank you for um, just always being there for us, even when we don't feel it. Um, Lord, we know loneliness can be a very, a very difficult, um, a difficult feeling and it can be really heavy. So, Lord, I just pray um that you just make yourself near because you're near to the people who are lonely and the brokenhearted. And so I just pray that those who are struggling with loneliness, that you just help them recognize that you're right there with them every moment. Um, God, I just pray that you give people opportunities and that you open doors for people to connect with one another. Um, and just thank you for all of the communities you have all around us, Lord. And I hope that we can just find a good fit and for everyone listening. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, don't forget, uh, if you want to catch this episode or others, it's we uh, have new episodes every Thursday morning, 7 a.m. on Facebook, 
Amazon Music, Spotify, or Apple Podcast. And you can also go to mindhorse.com slash care for additional resources. We love you guys, and we'll catch you next week.